deriving from springs in a cliff almost 200 meters high overlooking the plain of Karaksu in southwest Turkey, calcite-laden waters have created an unreal landscape, made up of mineral forests, petrified waterfalls and a series of terraced basins given the name of Pamakal, Cotton Palace. Located in the province of Denizli, this extraordinary landscape was a focus of interest for visitors to the nearby Hellenistic spa town of Hierapolis. Founded by the Atalid kings of Pergamum at the end of the 2nd century BC, at the site of an ancient cult. Its hot springs were also used for scouring and drying wool. Ceded to Rome in 133 BC, Hierapolis flourished, reaching its peak of importance in the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD, having been destroyed by an earthquake in 60 AD and rebuilt. Remains of the Greco-Roman period include baths, temple ruins, a monumental arch, a nymphium, an acropolis and a theater. Following the acceptance of Christianity by the Emperor Constantine and his establishment of Constantinople as the new Rome in 330 AD, the town was made a bishopric. As the place of St. Philip's martyrdom in 80 AD, commemorated by his martyrdom building in the 5th century, Hierapolis with its several churches became an important religious center for the Eastern Roman Empire. The combination of striking natural formations and the development of a complex system of canals, bringing the thermal water to nearby villages and fields, is exceptional. The springs are the source of a hydraulic system extending 70 kilometers northwest to Alsa and westwards along the valley of the Menduiers River. Pamakal forms an important backdrop to the original Greco-Roman town of Hierapolis and the cultural landscape which dominates the area. Criterion 3. Hierapolis is an exceptional example of a Greco-Roman thermal installation established on an extraordinary natural site. The therapeutic virtues of the waters were exploited at the various thermal installations, which included immense hot basins and pools for swimming. Hydrotherapy was accompanied by religious practices, which developed in relation to local cults. The Temple of Apollo, which includes several Tonian divinities, was erected on a geological fault from which noxious vapors escaped. The theater, which dates from the time of Severus, is decorated with an admirable frieze depicting a ritual procession and a sacrifice to the Ephesian Artemis. The necropolis, which extends over two kilometers, affords a vast panorama of the funerary practices of the Greco-Roman era. Criterion 4. The Christian monuments of Hierapolis, erected between the 4th and the 6th centuries, constitute an outstanding example of an early Christian architectural group with a cathedral, baptistry and churches. The most important monument, situated outside the northwest wall of the city, is the Martyrium of St. Philip. At the top of a monumental stairway, the octagonal layout of the building is remarkable because of its ingenious spatial organization. Radiating from the central octagon are chapels, polygonal halls and triangular rooms, which combine to culminate in a square structure encircled by rectangular cells, bordered with porticos. Criterion 7. Calcite-laden waters from hot springs, emerging from a cliff almost 200 meters high overlooking the plain, have created a visually stunning landscape at Pamakal. These mineralized waters have generated a series of petrified waterfalls, stalactites and pools with step-like terraces, some of which are less than a meter in height while others are as high as 6 meters. Fresh deposits of calcium carbonate give these formations a dazzling white coating. The Turkish name Pamakal, meaning cotton castle, is derived from this striking landscape. Integrity the property is largely intact and includes all the attributes necessary to express its outstanding universal value, based on the strong and tight integration between the natural landscape, the white, trivetine terraces and numerous thermal springs, and culture, the city ruins from the Greco-Roman and Byzantine period, especially the theater and the necropolis. The boundaries of the site are adequate to reflect the site's significance. The main threats to the integrity of the property are high numbers of international tourists that represent a very important economic resource for the regional economy. The area of the small lake formed by earthquakes and thermal sources around the ancient civil agora, where thousands of tourists can swim between the ancient columns and marble architectural decorations, is particularly threatened. This has led to biological pollution and constant erosion of the ancient Roman marble elements, and
and the relevant authorities are planning to set up a monitoring system to assist in managing this problem. Authenticity Most of the property is free of modern buildings and the architectural monuments can easily be appreciated. Some old monuments are in use again, for example the theatre is used for performances with participation of thousands of people, while excavation and restoration works on the site are still going on. All the projects are based on anastylosis methods such as in the front scanny of the theatre, the gymnasium and the templin of the Church of St. Philip. The monumental and archaeological remains truthfully and credibly express the outstanding universal value of the property in terms of its setting, form, and materials. The mausoleums and triplis street in the north necropolis, the city walls from the southeastern Roman gate to the Trivatine terraces, the latrina located to the east of Domitian gate, the colonnaded street and the gymnasium have been restored. The structure of the Bath Basilica, which suffered earthquake damage, has been reinforced. Protection and management requirements Hierapolis Pamakal is legally protected through national conservation legislation, but there is no specific planning legislation to protect world heritage properties. The responsibility for managing and conserving the property is shared by the national government, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the Ministry of Environment and Urbanism, Local Administration, Denizli Provincial Special Administration, and several state institutions. The approval of the Regional Conservation Council and Provincial Directorate for Environment and Urbanism has to be obtained for physical interventions and functional changes in the site. The site was registered as a first-degree natural and archaeological site in 1980 by decision of the Supreme Council for Antiquities and Monuments. In 1990, an area of approximately 66 square kilometers, larger than the World Heritage property, was registered as a special protected area, by decision of Cabinet. Visitor centers at the northern and southern entrances to the site have been built, and a conservation plan approved. Hotel buildings on site and structures around the thermal pool have been removed, entry of private vehicles into the site is forbidden, except for emergencies, public transportation is provided for visitors. The road passing through this southeastern, Trivatine terraces has been closed, visitor routes and information panels are provided within the site, and tourist facilities are restricted to the edge of the monumental area. Visitor access to the Trivatine terraces is prohibited in order to sustain the water flow and to maintain the color and structure of the Trivatine terraces. Areas where visitors can bathe in the hot springs have been established. An agreement between the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the Provincial Special Administration has established a site management directorate within Denizli Provincial Special Administration, which oversees the procedures and principles to conserve, develop and manage the site. This directorate provides coordination between various stakeholders and landscaping, security and cleaning services. An advisory board, composed of central and local administrations, non-governmental organizations and scientific groups, in particular the head of the excavation team, provides recommendations to the site management directorate concerning projects in the site. The Italian excavation team, that has been extensively investigating the site since 1957, has specified policies for a management plan aimed at determining the standards for restoration and rehabilitation, based on the Venice Charter, 1964, for conservation of historical monuments. This includes accessibility and visitor management, policies for enhancing perception of the site, and risk management. The main threats to the integrity of the property are high numbers of international tourists that represent a very important economic resource for the regional economy. The area of the small lake formed by earthquakes and thermal sources around the ancient civil agora, where thousands of tourists can swim between the ancient columns and marble architectural decorations, is particularly threatened. This has led to biological pollution and constant erosion of the ancient Roman marble elements, and the relevant authorities are planning to set up a monitoring system to assist in managing this problem. Authenticity Most of the property is free of modern buildings and the architectural monuments can easily be appreciated. Some old monuments are in use again, for example the theatre is used for performances with participation of thousands of people, while excavation and restoration works on the site are still going on. 
All the projects are based on anastylosis methods such as in the front scania of the theater, the gymnasium and the templin of the Church of St. Philip. The monumental and archaeological remains truthfully and credibly express the outstanding universal value of the property in terms of its setting, form, and materials. The mausoleums and triplice street in the north necropolis, the city walls from the southeastern Roman gate to the Trivatine terraces, the latrina located to the east of Domitian gate, the colonnaded street and the gymnasium have been restored. The structure of the Bath Basilica, which suffered earthquake damage, has been reinforced. Protection and management requirements Hierapolis Pamakal is legally protected through national conservation legislation, but there is no specific planning legislation to protect world heritage properties. The responsibility for managing and conserving the property is shared by the national government, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the Ministry of Environment and Urbanism, Local Administration, Denizli Provincial Special Administration, and several state institutions. The approval of the Regional Conservation Council and Provincial Directorate for Environment and Urbanism has to be obtained for physical interventions and functional changes in the site. The site was registered as a first-degree natural and archaeological site in 1980 by decision of the Supreme Council for Antiquities and Monuments. In 1990, an area of approximately 66 km2, larger than the World Heritage property, was registered as a special protected area by decision of cabinet. Visitor centers at the northern and southern entrances to the site have been built, and a conservation plan approved. Hotel buildings on site and structures around the thermal pool have been removed. Entry of private vehicles into the site is forbidden, except for emergencies. Public transportation is provided for visitors. The road passing through the southeastern Trivatine terraces has been closed, visitor routes and information panels are provided within the site, and tourist facilities are restricted to the edge of the monumental area. Visitor access to the Trivatine terraces is prohibited in order to sustain the water flow and to maintain the color and structure of the Trivatine terraces. Areas where visitors can bathe in the hot springs have been established. An agreement between the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and the Provincial Special Administration has established a site management directorate within Denizli Provincial Special Administration, which oversees the procedures and principles to conserve, develop and manage the site. This directorate provides coordination between various stakeholders and landscaping, security and cleaning services. An advisory board, composed of central and local administrations, non-governmental organizations and scientific groups, in particular the head of the excavation team, provides recommendations to the site management directorate concerning projects in the site. The Italian excavation team, that has been extensively investigating the site since 1957, has specified policies for a management plan aimed at determining the standards for restoration and rehabilitation, based on the Venice Charter, 1964, for conservation of historical monuments. This includes accessibility and visitor management, policies for enhancing perception of the site, and risk management.